Go Georgia, let's go down to the field. Mitch Glicken has an update for us. Mitch? Guys, this is not just a football game. This should be a war. Now, these two teams have played three times in the past. Two of those were for national championships, though. And going into this game, both teams feel a national championship caliber type of performance. Now, the Eagles need to win to keep their first place hopes alive in the Southern Conference. But Furman's backs are to the wall. They need a win to keep any hopes of postseason and a conference crown alive. So this game won't just be a football game. It's going to be a war. And we take a look at those standings. Thanks, Mitch. And you see exactly how important they are with Georgia Southern up top at 5-1 and one in the conference. Marshall nipping at their heels. And you see Furman. They're in fourth place at 3-2. and two. So needless to say, a win today would be huge to go to 4-2 and two and put them right back in the thick of this Southern Conference race. Well, it has been raining for about the last three days, and someone upstairs looked down upon us and parted the skies, and we see the sun for the first time in about 72 hours. Weather conditions right at 70 degrees, a 15-mile-an-hour wind out of the northwest. Still a 70% chance of rain this afternoon, but I think... That can pretty much go out the window. As soon as I say that, though, watch what'll happen. A good crowd on hand this afternoon at Paulson Stadium, where Georgia Southern, they are used to seeing their Eagles win. There is Eric Smith getting set to put his toe into it. Damon Bradley and Mark Tate wait deep for Furman. And this will be Damon Bradley, seven yards deep, wisely takes a knee, and we'll see his Furman Paladin offense Come out to the 20-yard line where they'll scrimmage first down and 10. Kevin, you just saw an example of the wind there today. It's blowing left to right as we look out on the field, and that uh, ball is kicked well deep into the end zone. I think that you're going to see some problems affirming if they want to put the ball in the air early against that breeze. Special teams have been a key in this series. We talked about that. There you see Philly Jones, the junior from Winder, Georgia. Thrown for over 1,000 yards this season while completing nearly 60% of his passes, and they will work without a huddle. Paladins on first down, and Philly Jones wants to go to the air, does, and it's complete to Rod Green. And Green out near the first down. He's out at the 28-yard line. So you said earlier, <laughs> Furman, if they're going to have to move the football, if they're going to want to move the football, they're going to have to throw it. Well, I think you, if you want to play against Georgia Southern consistently, you're going to have to do some things to take them out of their mode. You see Philly Jones stepping back. Their play action holds the linebacker. Scott Davis unable to get in good shape on green. But you can have some success against Georgia Southern if you throw it. You can't make a steady diet. Up. You've got to run at him a little bit, too. Rod Green, they go right to him. He had a tough game last week against VMI. He fumbled twice. But they get him right into the action this afternoon. Now they hand it off. This is Leo McClarty, who got his first start a week ago against BMI and had a big game. He'll stumble across the 30-yard line and have the first down. Let's take a look at that offensive line. PV Jordan and Brown inside, and Fisher and Ludwig on the outside. Backs and receivers. We talked about Philly Jones. You saw Rod Green. McCart McClarty getting the start. Ford, Bradley, and Wild all can be dangerous receivers. So on first and ten from the eye. Again, they throw it, and again, it's complete. Rick Ford, the junior from Marietta, Georgia, makes the reception his 17th of the season. Once again, they come right back. No play action here. A little bit of a zone by Georgia Southern. Davis makes the tackle, but I think it's more the missed tackle than anything that's uh, by Alton Hitson. He has first shot at him. Very well delivered. Gives you a lot of confidence in your offense, certainly in your quarterback, Philly Jones, in his first two passes. Opening drive of the football game. Just underway from Statesboro, Georgia. Glad you could be with us this afternoon on Sports South. Option play. Philly Jones will keep it. Goes ahead for a couple into Eagle territory at the 48-yard line. Now, both of these teams are option football teams, so they should be a defensive battle. We take a look at that defense. Burt, Mash, Flowers, and Morris up front. The linebackers probably the strength of this defense, Dawson Davis and Scott Davis. Austin and Roselle, the corners, and Stockton and Hitson will lay some leather on you. And there is Jimmy Satterfield in his eighth season, has a national championship on the resume. 1988, they won the Division I AA championship, and they beat this same Georgia Southern Eagle football team. Philly Jones, all kinds of time, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. 
I think the big guy that got the hand up there was Walter Flowers, a freshman from Savannah. See if you see 95, get a pawn. Well, they're doing a great job of protecting, and he's got a clear angle. He's waiting for a clear out. He looks deep a little bit first, maybe even look a safety off, but he's trying to come underneath the Leo McCartney. And a nice job by Walter Flowers getting up and batting that ball down. Lee Brooks in there. And Lee Brooks uh, usually a defensive end starting inside, getting some quickness inside for that Georgia Southern front. And he's a freshman as well. So now third down, passing down for Philly Jones. Has his man, it's complete. And a first down as Rod Green out of the backfield, the senior from Columbia, South Carolina, makes his second catch of the game. Furman keeping it simple, but moving the football. Yeah, it's a clear out type of offense. Run everybody deep, run Bradley deep and Rick Ford, and then run your backs a little bit underneath. As you see, they do right now to McCartley. What happens here is when they pull the linebackers out, Nick Davis and Scott Davis to get back and help the secondary, there's a lot of room underneath. So a first down from the 37 yard line. Leo McClarty. And McClarty, we'll see where he stepped out of bounds, but that's good yardage on first down as he picks up five. How big is it? We talk so often, coaches do about how important it is to, to be facing a second down and five rather than a second down and eight or second down and nine. Well, you've got the option uh, then to run or pass. You have them a little bit off balance. Here's a nice job by Leo McClarty. He runs away from Walter Flowers. Flowers uh, getting a good job inside of getting off that block. But uh, here at second and five, you have Georgia Southern a little bit on the heels. They have to guess a little bit with you, run or throw. You just need to come up with half this yardage for a third down. Fullback first man through, big hole. First down and more down to the 15 yard line goes Heath Brownstead. A senior from Ironton, Ohio, picks up 17 yards. Nice job by the Furman line. Look at him flat back and coming off the ball, doing a good job of containing Alex Mash inside. And then it's Brownstead, six foot, 235. Look at this enormous hole. That's got, that's got to be on the left side there. That left guard for uh, Furman did a great job of turning Walter Flowers out. Jim Peavy, the man who paved the way, the junior from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Another first down play, Leo McCarty. And McClarty down to the 10-yard line. And the folks, although we are early, folks on hand this afternoon, a little bit in shock the way Furman has just come out and taken it to Georgia Southern. This Georgia Southern team is 65-5 and five in this stadium. Power blocking at the line of scrimmage. They're double teaming number 98 for Georgia Southern. He's replacing uh, Alex Mash. Mash out of there maybe with a bad ankle, but 98, Roderick Christford, he gets, uh, he gets a nice job by that right side of the Furman line as they ride him out. Michael Brown, Mike Jordan, and a good block by Brownstead, the big fullback. Counting down to 12 minutes in the first quarter. Opening drive. Furman started at their own 20, and now Philly Jones wants a timeout. Didn't like what he saw in the defense, so says, why not? We will burn one. So 12-10 to play. Our score, nothing, nothing. Back to Statesboro in just a moment. overall here at Georgia Southern. He also has a national championship on his resume. But Philly Jones has looked impressive so far in the nine plays on this drive. Furman has done a good job mixing it up. They've run the ball six times and passed it three. That time they may have been better off to pass it because no one was fooled up front. Charlie Burke, the first man to get there, the junior from Winter Haven, Florida, would have nothing to do with it. Well, anytime you want to stop the option that the quarterback has, you crash everybody. This time they crash Scott Davis and Charlie Burt, and he hands it off, and both of them are looking for the inside guy. They're, they're, they're going to turn loose Philly Jones. That time, maybe he should have kept it and gone wide. Really, the first negative play of the afternoon for Furman. So it's now third down and four. Quick drop complete. Damon Bradley and Bradley. Gets inside the 10 yard line, but a swarming defense was there to make the stop. Marco Bradham led the way. Also, Brandon Roselle coming up from his cornerback spot. Georgia Southern knew they had to pass after shutting them down on second down, and uh, they're not even looking for any kind of run here. They want to just penetrate. This is a play that's very dangerous down there. It's well covered by both 
Marco Bradrum and Alton Hitson. Both of them are over there in, in position to make this play. So Jim Richard comes in for the field goal, and he is good. So Furman takes 11 plays to go 80 yards, and they kick it through, and they lead it 3 nothing with 10.53 to play on Southern Conference Saturday. We'll be back to Statesboro in just a moment. It's turned out to be a very pleasant afternoon here in Statesboro, Georgia. These guys are trying to figure out what exactly happened on that last drive because Furman did pretty much what Furman wanted to do until they got into that red zone. Yeah, you're seeing Tommy Spangler, the defensive coordinator, Georgia Southern, talking to his defensive charges and, and uh, trying to explain exactly what they're trying to do as far as the, the mix-up that they have out there. And I don't mean a mix-up in Georgia Southern's defense. I mean the mix that Furman is throwing at them, the combination run and pass. The scoring drive in those 12 plays, Furman threw it five times. You see they went 72 yards in 407. That was the opening drive of the ball, of the ball game. And they get the three to go through. Eight years as a head coach, Jimmy Satterfield of Furman. He's lost 16 Southern Conference games. Only four have been by more than 10 points. Only one by 14. So he likes to keep a game close. And he certainly likes to start it out by getting ahead. Chad Jackson, the left footer, will have to reset the ball on the tee. Good crowd on hand this afternoon. And it's turned out to be a nice day. It's been raining for about three straight days here in Statesboro, Georgia. At 50 miles to the northwest of Savannah. Chris Wright heals his own goal line waiting for this kick. And this will be into the win. Wright should have a chance for a run back. Comes to an up man from the 20-yard line. Georgia Southern's going to have great field position as they get out to the 32-yard line. It was Terry Lester, freshman from Lithonia, Georgia, who made that return. And there you see Charles Bostic. Bostic, who had a big game two weeks ago against VMI, coming in in replacement of uh, Joe Dupree, who went out with a strained knee. And Bostic started all of last year, so he is no stranger to the wars. A junior from Thomasville, Georgia. James Williams, the single setback. Option, they take it up the middle, and this is James Williams. Now let's go down and check in on the field. Mitch Glicken, what you got for us? Guys, during this week of practice, the main reason Charles Bostic is the starter is he's accelerating a lot quicker, and he's got the offense going outside a lot more now. Of course, they're going to try to establish the fullback up the middle, but look for Charles Bostic to do a lot of running today. All right, thank you, Mitch. Bostic, two weeks ago against VMI, rushed for 118 yards as a quarterback. He was 11 of 12 passing. The only incompletion came when he spiked the football to stop the clock. Now Bostic on the roll. Comes out of there, but he's going to be short of the first down. Third down, and five will be coming up as he gets up near the 38-yard line. Pocket just broke down that time. Yeah, the key is shutting them down in first down and letting them get into a coverage situation. It's pretty good protection until it breaks down late, and Clayton Gibson gets a, a shot up the middle. Charles is unable, Charles Bostic unable to find anybody open, but... The key is to cover him, and they don't even blitz him that time. He came very late. It wasn't a, a pre-planned blitz. You see Ayub on the offensive line making his 45th straight start. You see the backs and receivers. They're all good ones. Option again. Bostic, nowhere to go. Jim Miller made that play. The junior from Spartanburg. Transfer from Air Force. Milan Sterling may have made the tackle, but Jim Miller, watch him come through number 77. They want to trap. Isaac Farrell wants to trap Jim Miller. Jim Miller's tremendous penetration, though, messes up the option. That He's way too deep in the backfield. They'd rather trap him up closer to the line, and that forces Bostic up inside into Mo Sterling. Now punt time for Georgia Southern, and a good punt. All the way back to the five-yard line, and great coverage downfield. Georgia Southern could not have executed that one any better. Troy Strappy, check it. It was Andre Worrell running it back. But for Georgia Southern, Brandon Roselle making the play. A 58-yard punt. Let's go down and check in with Mitch Glicken. 
Now, the one thing Georgia Southern loves to stress, it is the special teams. It's how they beat Furman last year at Furman. It was a kickoff return by Chris Wright, then a blocked field goal late in the game by Alex Mash. So if Georgia Southern's offense isn't going, they're not too worried because they're going to rely on a very good special team. Back to you guys. And that was Travis Taylor, excuse me, who made that play for Georgia Southern, pinning Furman back down at the five-yard line. This is McClarty. McClarty hurdles the five, gets out to about the eight-yard line. We take a look at the officials for this afternoon's game. Harold Bender is the referee. Roger Pedrick, the umpire headlinesman, is Jack McElwee. Clock judge is Doug, uh, Doug Hudson, Gene Hartlib, Ralph Pickett, and Frank Overstreet. And also we want to mention that Joe Dawson, he is ill and was not able to make it here. He's been very ill, as a matter of fact. And uh, Joe, if you're watching... Wherever you are this afternoon, a lot of people here in Statesboro asked about you and are definitely thinking about you. Andre Worrell, a, a veteran punt returner for Furman. He caught that ball back inside the five, and, you, and you've had to feel maybe he's pressing a little bit, trying to make a big play. Last year, he averaged about 14 yards a punt. It's about half of that this year, but he had to feel like he, make, he would try to make a play for his football team, and it was a, a, a mistake, at least in, in his judgment. Well, second down and seven. From deep inside Furman territory. Play action. Philly Jones has a man open. Complete. Rick Ford will score. 92 big ones. Just like that. Furman is out in front, 9 nothing. Remember the opening play of the game where he hit the running back with all that play action back in the backfield. This time, Brandon Roselle, the corner, bites on it. That's a busted coverage. He's trying to come up and make a play on Rod Green. Rick Ford, he runs wide open, able to beat hits in there for the, the last saving gas tackle. They've shocked this crowd. Jim Richer for the point after. He kicks it through, and with 8.22 to play, we have got a 10-0 ball game. You thought maybe the tide was turning after that big, uh, that big special teams play, but not so. Philly Jones to Rick Ford. We're back to Statesboro in just a moment. There is how they adjusted their defense. They brought all their quarterbacks up because... Furman had such an easy time driving down the field the first time, and it was successful its first two times, but Brandon Roselle slipped down. It was single-man coverage, and the rest is history. Now Georgia Southern's offense has got to get it going. Chris Wright dances out to the 25-yard line and goes down there. Andre Worrell making the play for Furman. Now, the credit really should go to the way Furman has mixed it up as you take a look at the scoring drive. Yeah, you're not going to find many teams uh, backed up on their own a five-yard line, they're going to throw the football, at least go for the deep ball, and that was a deep ball all the way. Philly Jones picked him out. He he knew that Rod Green was covered uh, short by the linebacker on that side. I think that was Darius Dawson and also uh, by Brandon Roselle, and he just went deep. He spotted him, and, and it was gone. And as you saw, that ties a Furman record for the longest reception ever. Now Bostic on the option, pitches it back. First down and more out to the 40-yard line goes Chris Wright, the junior, from Valdosta, Georgia. Well, I tell you, Georgia Southern needed a play like that. Yeah, they've been getting a lot of more out of their slot backs. Chris Wright, Shaft, and Fraley. Here you're going to see a great block. James Williams on Andre Worrell, and that springs right loose after he picks his feet up. But they've been getting a lot more yardage by getting the ball outside. First thing you want to do defensively is shut down the fullback on any type of option team inside, so it opens up the outside a little bit. Chris Wright got 15 on that play. So from the 40-yard line on first down. Bostic wants to throw. He'll air it out. And this one just off the fingertips of Cavus Reed, who was back there in coverage, the cornerback. He's a junior from Choppy, South Carolina. Not much chance there uh, from a defensive standpoint. Well played by Furman. Uh, they really were looking for Darren Willis on that side. Cavus Reed, uh, he had a better chance catching that ball than Darren Willis. That play was, uh, it's nice when you fool them a little bit, but when you don't, they're waiting on it, as they have been. A nice job so far by the defensive firm in the first couple of series. So now second down and 10. 
Bostic on the quarterback draw. Bostic skirts through. Bostic one man to beat. And down at the 10-yard line. What a huge run for Charles Bostic. 50 yards for the junior from Thomasville, Georgia. Well, this is what they can do to you. I mean, his, he's an outstanding, this is all quarterback draw, and wait, watch this block by Chris Wright down on Mark Tate, the safety. There's one that springs Bostic loose, and he has the ability to make the cuts. He looks like a running back rather than a quarterback, and this is what I think they've hoped for him the last couple of years. He's 11-7 and seven as a starter here, but he's had a little confidence maybe of sitting and watching Joe Dupree the first part of this season. He's really picked it up the last three games. First and goal from just inside the 10-yard line. Right up the middle goes James Williams, and he may get right back to the 10 and just a little bit more. You know, that time, if Bostic had not looked back to see if anybody was coming, that's when he looked like he lost his balance. Well, I tell you, uh, Satchel Page, and I don't want to cliche it, I've never looked back, but it is in football, too. Don't worry about where they're coming from. Worry about where you're going. And he might have just taken a little bit of a stride off, but a nice effort, I think, by a safety when you're beaten that way to, uh, to keep coming after him, and, and that was Jason Emsley making that tackle. Tim Stowers bunch me with that 50-yard run. Bostic again will run the option, pitches it back. Chris Wright will get into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. The Georgia Southern takes a tough shot to the chin from Furman and answers right back. Here you're going to watch them. They run it into their slot with, uh, it looks like Dexter Dawson over there who's downfield blocking, but they get a nice job of, of blocking off Livesey and good recognition by Charles Bostic. He sees it's wide open outside, stops early, and gives him a lot of room to run. Reed Haley for the point after. And he's good. Well, we thought we may be seeing a defensive ball game to here. Shows what we know so far. I think we said close. <laughs> and it is close, but it could be high scoring the way these two offenses have opened up. 17 points already in the first nine minutes of the first quarter. 6.26 to play. 10-7 is our score. Furman took the opening kickoff, came up with a 25-yard field goal. Then Philly Jones to Rick Ford on a 92-yard touchdown. And right there, you see the man of the minute, Chris Wright, who scored from seven yards out for Georgia Southern. So important as a football team when uh, you fall behind, doesn't matter if you're home or away, to answer what a team's doing. And that's what Georgia Southern has done. Two nice drives by, by uh, the Furman. You see Coach Jimmy Satterfield on the sideline by Coach Satterfield's football team. Two nice opening drives, and Georgia Southern answers it. There's a couple of young fans watching today's ball game. They love it. Boy, driving up here from Savannah, there was a ton of people coming in with the blue and gold. Well, they love their football here in, Georgia, in here in Southern Georgia. Homecoming here in Statesboro, and there, there's a great atmosphere about a homecoming game at any college. And so many of them are played probably this time of the year, a little bit after that heat passes on by, and you get the late fall. Eric Smith to kick it away. This one comes to Damon Bradley, and Bradley will take a knee. That last scoring drive, well orchestrated by Georgia Southern. The big play of those five was a 50-yard run by quarterback Charles Bostic. Took a little less than two minutes and right from six yards out. And now Furman has some answering back to do. You see, they'll stay in that offensive huddle there on the sideline, come right out and get over the football. They might have learned that from uh, Sam Weish. Now, there's a Furman graduate, played quarterback for Furman back in the early 60s, and, and he has that no-huddle offense, so they huddle on the sideline and run on out onto the field. So from the 20, the Paladins will scrimmage. McClarty, maybe a gain of a couple. Georgia Southern defense doing a good job stringing it out. Michael Morris leads the way, a junior from Adele, Georgia. This is maybe what uh, Furman has really missed is that running game. They had a guy named Carl Trimble there. They've had Stanford Jennings. They've always been a great rushing football team. And in fact, in the 80s, they led the country in rushing. 260-yard average under Jimmy Satterfield's option-style offense. It has been missing from their attack this year. One back that really stands out. Nine minutes deep in the first quarter. 10-7. Furman with the ball and the lead. 
Philly Jones has a man, Damon Bradley. Bradley out near the first down. He was hit quickly by Rob Stockton, the free safety from Clayton, Georgia. We'll see if it's enough for a first down. It'll depend on the spot. Boy, Philly Jones has come out and been very impressive. Might not be the tightest spiral throw him, but look at how accurate it is. He, he picks out Bradley over on the sidelines. This ball is thrown from the far hash mark all the way across the field, and he delivers it on time right where it needs to be, and he's showing a lot of confidence in his throwing today. Well, the ball set at about the 28 and a half yard line. They need the 30, the yard to make, and they get it. McClarty goes ahead for the first down. The drive will continue for Furman. Take a look at the one double A poll. And you see the Southern Conference very well represented. I would say uh, two out of the top three is, is, is pretty tough. And you see Marshall at number two and Georgia Southern at number four. And you see Western Carolina gets in the top 25 as they are there at number 22. Yeah, the top three teams in the Southern Conference, the fourth team being Furman, uh, trying to work its way into uh, some kind of Southern Conference standings, uh, at least in the top three, with a win over Georgia Southern today. Quick hitter up the middle, not much doing. That's Rod Green, the 207-pound senior from Columbia, South Carolina, who's done a good job catching the football today. But that time, had fooled no one on the Georgia Southern defense. Those are one of those plays you just have to run just to keep the defense honest, right? Well, that's where they hit him with a little bit earlier. We saw that uh, the, the big fullback, uh, Keith Brownstead, he, he was the one who carried that ball, 10 or 15-yard gain. And, and it does keep him honest, but uh, they've got to honor that inside with a lot of people. But he did get two and a half to three, so second down and call it seven. Billy Jones on the option, nowhere to go. Good defensive play that time. Scott Davis, junior from Powder Springs, Georgia, has come in. He's playing the strong side linebacker. He was a last-minute change. He's been playing well. He has a, done a, a nice job. Here he takes on the, the block by the pulling guard. Furman using their guards on their option to pull out a little bit and make it look a little different. That's Jim Peavy. But Scott Davis has filled in well when Paul Carroll, the middle linebacker, went down. They moved Nick Davis back inside. See only three down linemen on this third down and long. Incomplete. Boy, tried to drill that one through, and it was tipped away. Good defensive play on the part of Georgia Southern that time. Paul Carroll got a hand in there. Carroll, a leading tackler on this Georgia Southern team. Yeah, the shotgun does not fool Georgia Southern. They're looking for it all the way, and he's trying to fit Bradley into the middle of a zone. Nice job by the, the entire secondary of collapsing up, but certainly Paul Carroll getting a hand on the ball and just tipping it. Ronnie McCutcheon, the number one punter in the Southern Conference at 44 yards a boot, will be kicking into the wind. And he kicks it away to Dexter Dawson. Got away a pretty good punt. Dawson takes it at the 29-yard line. And Dawson out to the 40. A good field position by George for Georgia Southern to start this drive. Brent Solomon down there on coverage for Furman. Kind of interesting looking at a left-footed punter. You don't uh, you don't see that often in in uh, college football or in football per se. And and the ball will come down to the re to the receiver in a different rotation. And nice job by Dexter Dawson able to handle that football. It wasn't a, a tight spiral. There was a little bit of wobble to it, too. That was a nice 40-yard punt into a pretty stiff breeze. Guy's a strong punter. Big, tall lad, about 6'6". Option play. Bostic. Maybe a gain of one. Let's go downstairs. Mitch? Guys, where uh, Southern is really trying to exploit the Furman defense is taking it wide off of Bostic's running ability. The fullback has not been able to get it going really all season for Georgia Southern, so they're going to really rely on heavily Charles Bostic's ad-libbing ability and pitching it wide to one of the slot backs. Thanks, Mitch. Boy, like I said a little bit earlier, he ad-libbed very well at VMI a couple of weeks ago. Ad-libbed for 118 yards on the ground, so he can do it. James Williams, the single setback. Bostic rolls the pocket. Now he will run it. Short of the first down. Patrick McGowan for Furman escorted him out of bounds. It's going to be a bring up a third down situation, though. I think this is going to be a planned run. I, I think he wanted to run all the way. You saw Steve Wright throw, and all of a sudden he felt like he couldn't get around to the left side, and he took it back to the right side. But looking at uh, how Georgia Southern had lined up out there. Uh, Marlo Warthen, it looked like he was in a position to block. Steve Wright was trying to block. I believe that was a quarterback rollout. There's some ad-libbing right there. 
So now it's third down and one. A long one, call it two. Option play, first down and more. James Williams. Down to the five yard line. Wow, what a run. Cedric Borders saved a touchdown. 47 yards. This is gonna be a game of big plays, Kevin. It, it might be tight, but it'll be a lot of big plays. It's a, it's kind of a counter reverse freeze option and he, he does a nice job. The, the big play though is the block that's put on by Marlo Warthen. He comes up and makes a good block on Andre Worrell and off to the races goes James Williams. I saw James do that same thing early in the year against the Citadel, another long run that he had and he hasn't had very many of them even though he's their leading rusher out of the backfield. First and goal, this is Warthen back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Just got back to the five yard line and there's the reason right there. Ryan Livesey, two time all Southern Conference player He's a senior from Norcross, Georgia, and he is a big-time athlete at 6'5", 250 pounds. Well, you're going to have to see their players, Andre Worrell, Ryan Livesey, Mo Sterling, Clayton Gibson, the one-two tacklers in the Southern Conference. You're going to have to see these guys making the play. We haven't called their names a lot, but if you're going to stop Georgia Southern consistently, their big players in Furman's defense have to make some plays. Second down and goal from the five. Quarterback draw to the goal line. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Charles Bostic wanted that one bad. Here's the man you got to account for in the option offense, and, and certainly with the quarterback draw, I saw Charles Bostic run this play twice, or well, Joe Dupree once and Charles Bostic once in scoring against Appalachia State a couple of weeks ago. He is uh, good at getting the ball in the end zone. Point after is perfect, so with a minute 17 to play, new score. Georgia Southern 14, Furman 10. We've already seen 24 points here in this fir first quarter. Uh, that, that is something I did not expect to see. Well, I, I'll agree with you. I did not expect, I thought it'd be a close football game, but I didn't think either one of these teams would come out with some big plays. The big passing uh, of Furman and so far the two big runs by Georgia Southern, Charles Bostic and James Williams. They certainly have that potential with their athletes and the option offense, but you felt like the two defenses were too strong to give up big plays. So far, that has not been the case. So far, we've seen, like you said, the 50-yard run by Bostic in this game, a 47-yard run a little bit earlier by James Williams. We've seen a 92-yard pass from Furman's Billy Jones to Rick Ford. Take a look at the scoring drive, five plays, 60 yards. Again, the big run, the 50-yard run by Bostic. Excuse me, that was the last drive. The big run this time was James Williams. He's liking what he's seeing so far. Started off a little slow for the Georgia Southern faithful, but things are picking up. And how about sitting on a hillside watching a football game? Now, that, that's going to take you back a long way there. This is a beautiful stadium, Glen Bryant Field here, Paulson Stadium, but they've got a lot of horseshoe shape around it where there's a lot of hillside to sit on. You don't have to sit on the concrete stand. Eric Smith with the boot. Damon Bradley again for the third time in this game will take a knee. So Furman, who has been an offensive juggernaut this afternoon, the way they've moved the football, will start from the 20-yard line. Neither defense has been able to stop the other. Yeah, and you don't want to slow it down on offense. Uh, what you want to do is tighten your defenses up and work on that aspect of the game, but... Don't draw in your offenses so far. With both of them have operated uh, somewhat efficiently. For the and for the Furman Paladins, it's been the pass. It's been the throwing of Philly Jones. It has really kept Georgia Southern's defense on their heels. So first and ten from the twenty. And really, not a lot there. McClarty tries the right side, the sophomore from College Park, Georgia. Not a whole lot there. Good job on the defensive side. What, see Look if at, you saw some offsides. Yeah. I thought there was some movement earlier. Watch Walter Flowers, number 53, jump right. It looks like he violates the neutral zone. Maybe the timing is just perfect, but, uh, but uh, it might have been perfect anticipation, but nevertheless, he gets away with it. It's been a, a, a pretty penalty-free game so far. 
He was there to meet the handoff. Play action. Jones wants Bradley, has him. Bradley out to midfield. Another big play. I tell you what, both teams have have lived by the big play this afternoon. And well, here's another. He, here you got Damon Bradley one-on-one -on -one with Paul Carroll, and that's a match that Furman will want to get anytime they can. He's coming uh, out of a, a slot action on the left side, and he, and he runs a crossing pattern. To get that pattern to develop, you really got to hold the linebackers with some play action, and that's what Philly Jones is doing in the backfield. He's run that same kind of action about four times, and they've been successful three out of the four. It was a gain of 29 yards. McClarty has a hole and rumbles for about eight yards. Mark him down at the 42-yard line. And again, after a big pass play, the Furman offense is able to run the football. Yeah, this is just a simple toss. They want Brownstead to put a good block on Scott Davis, and he does a pretty good job of it. I think the more impressive, though, is the running of Leo McClarty, able to break a tackle by Paul Carroll, able to find a little, just a little gap there between Scott Davis and the other defender. Both teams getting it done on offense. And that is going to end what has been a very eventful first quarter of play. 24 points have been scored already. Don't go away, last team to have the ball may win this one. 14-10, <laughs> Georgia Southern leads it. Eschenfelder with Jeff Van Noak, Mitch Glicken on the sideline, and look at the passing yards so far. Furman, 163. Georgia Southern has yet to gain a yard through the air. Second down and two. McCarty has the first down as he stumbles inside the 40-yard line down to the 39. Rob Stockton making the stop for Georgia Southern, you know, take a look at it. Well, I, think he was, I think he was checking off a little bit at the, the line of scrimmage, and Alex Mash is almost back there on, on McClarty there, but a nice job by the safety, Rob Stockton, the leading tackler in the secondary, coming up and forcing just like he's supposed to. We were talking earlier with some of the people from Georgia Southern, they were talking about throwing the football, and uh, the story goes, Tim Stowers, they were giving, giving Tim Stowers a little grief about throwing the football a little bit more. I'll talk more about it after this play. They got a man, Rick Ford, overthrown and incomplete. Rick Ford trying again for another big play, but they told Stowers, hey, Georgia threw the ball 60 times. Get a little excitement in this offense. Georgia threw it, you know, this many times and everything else. And finally he said, Georgia lost, didn't they? <laughs> Well, there's a lot of interest around all the state schools here from uh, the coaches and, and folks in this part of the country. But it, you're right, Tim Stowers is old school football, kicking game, a run the football, good rush defense. Those are the kind of things that uh, made General name. That's why they named that stadium after him in Knoxville, I think. The second down and 10. Again, Philly Jones will go up top. Pocket collapses, and he will go down. Nick Davis led the charge, the senior from Griffin, Georgia. If you're going to run long pass routes, you, you hope that the play action will hold him a little bit. It doesn't this time as, as Georgia Southern's blitzing up the middle with Nick Davis and Scott Davis, the two Davises coming up the gut. But if you're going to run long passes, you've got to have a lot more time than that. Maybe it would help if they go back to mixing up their long pass a little bit with a short pass, talking about Furman. And so now third down and 14. We'll see what the Paladins come up with here on third down and long and it's complete but not enough for a first down it's gonna be well short of the first down Josh Cole the freshman from Dalton made that made the catch but well short of this first down and now they're in situation here where I think Furman's gonna go for it yeah I think they've got to feel like they're they're in a four down situation early in the game they've been moving the ball through the air and when they've mixed their run in, it's, it's the, the passing game. That's what we saw, that, that disparity in the yardage. It's the passing game that's opened up what running they've been able to have. So Furman is going to call a timeout. They'll talk over this fourth down and four situation. And you'll see it when we come back. 13-12 to go here in Statesboro. Started up their football program again for the first time since World War II. And you see what they have done in that short period of time. Four, count them, four national titles. That first one you saw came uh, with a win over Furman. 
back in 1985. This one incomplete on fourth down, and Georgia Southern's defense holds. Scott Davis, the linebacker, out there in coverage. And now maybe momentum switching over a little bit to the guys in blue. Yeah, I like the use of the shotgun by Furman in a five-out pattern in a, in a critical uh, fourth down situation of Philly Jones that also has the option. I think you'll see more of that as this game goes on, not necessarily on fourth down, but he has the option of running that football. And as an option quarterback himself, he can make some big plays, as has Charles Bostick running the football. So from the 33, Bostick again, lead option. Warthen out to midfield and knocked out of bounds, and this will be 15 more against Furman. A late hit is going to move this football down to about the 35-yard line. Well, it's a long option, and this is where they've made some running room with the exception of the run by Williams. A great block by Tyrone Stevens and Jason Ensley. And he does a great job, Marlo Worth, in it getting outside. And I'm not sure uh, about this, this late, late flag. What did they call it for a face mask? He did touch the face mask. But okay, it's only going to be five yards. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, Cavus Reed did a great, he was being blocked into him. And I, and at the same time, with a guy blocking on him, I thought he did a great job of keeping his hands off him. So a 17-yard run for Marlo Warthen, plus the five. That's a 22-yard pickup inside Furman territory down to the 48-yard line. Georgia Southern on the move again. And this down to the 40-yard line. Tyrone Stevens, a junior from Jessup, Georgia. That's the first time we have seen him this afternoon. He's the backup fullback behind James Williams. He picks up a few to bring up a second down and about four, make it five yards to go for the first down. They're doing a, a nice job of running away from Mo Sterling for the better part of the day. You see Mo Sterling flashing in the picture. He has to come from the other side of the field and uh, Georgia Southern has a lot of options when they get to that line of scrimmage of checking off into something, especially when you don't have a tight end either either side and you're, you're kind of in a balanced formation as Furman will look at Georgia Southern's offense. Boston to throw. And this one's picked off. Clayton Gibson with the pick. Known for his tackling abilities, but he gets the football back from Furman and they needed that as Georgia Southern leads it 14 to 10. The year, but uh, they only have four. This is the fourth interception for Georgia Southern this year. I think he wanted to go deep down the middle of Chris Wright, and I don't think he saw Clayton Gibson at all until he came off late to uh, to Bradley there, as, uh, uh, to Darren Wills, excuse me, as he was crossing. But he was looking down deep for Chris Wright, I think. Trying to get it straightened up stairs with the coaches up here in the booth. Quick hitter right up the middle. Good pickup on first down as Rod Green picks up seven. Now let's go down to Mitch Glicken. Mitch? Guys, right now Charles Bostic is on the phone to upstairs figuring out exactly what went wrong. The first guy to come over and comfort him after that costly interception, Joe Dupree. These two teammates are friends. Doesn't matter who's starting. And Coach Stauer said, that's all right. Next time, just make a better decision. Back to you guys. That's a good point. Bostic said that when uh, he found out he was going to get the start, it wasn't like he was jumping up and down. So Joe Dupree is a very good friend of mine. I want to do what's best for this football team. Almost was it picked? Yes, it was. What a play by Scott Davis. Had to lay out for that one and then show those linebacker hands. Well, as Philly Jones is making all the fakes in the backfield, he, he should have time to pick out Scott Davis. Scott Davis has seen this route at least twice already before this. And he's all over Rod Green and does what you're supposed to do as a, a DB or a linebacker, cut underneath, read the route, and cut underneath. Nice coverage, nice play by Scott Davis. So Georgia Southern back on offense. That's the first INT of the year for Scott Davis. Bostic back to the air. And Bostic had a couple of purple and white jerseys hanging off of him that time. Probably the best thing that could have happened to that football happened to it. It went straight to the ground. Yeah, Georgia Southern only running a two-out pattern. Finally, you're going to see a play by Mo Sterling. And Mo has been very quiet this first half. He's their best defender. Uh, Clayton Gibson just made an interception to play before. 
Mo Sterling, Liv Z. These guys have got to pick it up. Andre Worrell for Furman against this offense that Georgia Southern's throwing at him. And, and right there you saw Mo Sterling with a play. Sterling, as we said, the leading tackler in the Southern Conference. And they say he's not 100% today because of bruised ribs. Quick hitter up the middle, not much there. Third down is coming up. And to be honest with you, I think Charles Bostic could just assume look at 80% of Mo Sterling than 100% of him. Yeah, he's an outstanding football player. And in, in talking to the Georgia Southern coaches before the game, their offensive coaches, uh, Daryl Gast uh, mentioned, uh, they just stand out in the film. Guys who are, are fellows who can make plays on defense and, and the rest of this team plays very solid assignment football, but those guys just stand out as playmakers. Big play for Georgia Southern. Third down and eight. Bostic looking for Willis. It's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Ryan Livesey used all six foot five of that frame to knock that one down. The senior from Norcross, Georgia. Shows why he's two-time All-Southern Conference. Yeah, he's a fine defensive football player. He's got 20 sacks in his career, and we haven't seen that out of him today, but you can see why they play in the wide side of the field. Six foot five. He does a nice job of understepping the block of of Chris Wright and he's only five foot nine so he avoids another blocker gets back there and gets his hands up. Ten on the line of scrimmage as they come after it. Thatcher gets it away. Warrell just gets away from it. And this is not going to be one of Thatcher's better punts as it goes dead at the 13. Make it the 18 yard line. That's where Furman will scrimmage first down and ten. So the two teams trade a couple of turnovers. And the punt puts it right back in the Paladins hand. Only a punt of 25 yards. A couple of scores from around the country. Number one team in the country, Youngstown State. The Penguins leading Indiana State by three. Marshall having no problem with East Tennessee State. A first down and 10 for Furman. McClarty. Runs into the pile out to the 20-yard line. Picks up two on the play. Second down and eight coming up. Next week, Furman will go to Marshall. They'll take on the Thundering Herd in Huntington. So a second down, long seven. Call it eight coming up for the Paladins of Furman. Coming at four, three, and one. Three and two in Southern Conference play. From the 29-yard line, Billy Jones sets in the pocket. Sets it up underneath, and it's complete to McCarty. Spun off one man, and will go ahead out to the 26-yard line. A third down play coming up for Furman. Look at Philly Jones. He, he, he keeps dropping and dropping. This is not a screen pass, but he's putting too much separation between he and Leo McClarty. Although, give Georgia Southern's defense some credit. Tommy Spangler, the defensive coordinator, they're starting to clamp on the backs coming out of the backfield. That time was Nick Davis. Uh, the time before it was Scott Davis, where he made the interception. Big third down coming up. Misdirection, but fooling no one. That's why Alex Mash was a preseason defensive player of the year in the Southern Conference. Big senior from Thomasville, Georgia. That's a busted assignment, I think, on that backside. Uh, uh, somebody, and, and it was probably when you're pulling the backside tackle, in this case, Brian Fisher, uh, PV the left guard, somebody's got to ensure on the backside that Alex Mash doesn't go loose, especially a guy like Alex Mash. There's Ronnie McCutcheon. And he will be punting with the win. And Furman wants a timeout. Uh, I don't think they had enough people on the field. Eight punted away. Interesting matchup, as you see. Ronnie McCutcheon, the number one punter in the Southern Conference. And back deep, Dexter Dawson, the number one return man. High snap. And Brock was who's going to get on it. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Francis Williams made the block. 
We have to take a number to see who got on the football. <laughs> I think it may have been Jonathan Richardson. Five punt blocks this year. We saw him do it against Appalachian State, and and I. It looks like Branson Williams with a high snap. He just he, he's doing all he can. Thatcher just to kick the ball, but uh, might have should have taken a maybe he should have taken the loss right there. They were just closing in on no chance to get that ball off of that high snap. Jonathan Richardson, if that's who it was, made the recovery in the end zone for the touchdown. He's got two block punts himself this year. They do a great job of taking something away from you in key times with their special teams. And that's usually a block of a punt or a field goal. For the point after, perfect. So a new score in Statesboro. As Jonathan Richardson, the sophomore from Brunswick, Georgia, recovers the block punt for the touchdown, and Georgia Southern leads it 21 to 10. Time to go check in down on the field. Mitch Glicken. Guys, Ronnie McCutcheon never had a chance that time. That is why Furman called a timeout. Southern overloaded that line. There was no question they were going for the block. The return wasn't even on. And Jonathan Richardson comes up with his second touchdown of his career. These guys are recruited here at Georgia Southern for their specialist activity. Well, if you think that uh, if you think that uh, special teams can't win ball games, you haven't seen Georgia Southern play two out of the last three ball games. Yeah, too often, I think, if you're looking at a football game, you're just concerned offensive and defensively. The, the special teams, if you count every play up, probably makes up about a third of the plays of a football game. And more so than that, it gives you an opportunity to make big plays. Big plays returning the ball or big plays blocking a, as Georgia Southern does. That was the sixth block of the year for Georgia Southern. There you see Damon Bradley waiting back deep. Well, one of the things that does too is just hurt your confidence as a football team. You're in a game like that and they come up with a big play like that, you've got to really fight to overcome it. And this one comes out of bounds. This one will go back out to the 35. And that's where Furman will scrimmage after they talk it over for a minute. Well, that's a big penalty now. That's only been in uh, college football for what three or four years now where they bring it out to the 35 it's a great place to start a good field position to start to, to start a drive colleges usually follow the pro game and uh, the pros have had this in a number of years pros are now talking about because of some of the kickers they have in the game of moving it back to the 30 so you can get some more exciting returns i'm sure the colleges will follow well, first down and 10 paladins trailing 21 to 10. mcclarty over the 40-yard line, out to the 42. Mitch Glicken stands by on the sideline. Mitch? Guys, I'm joined by Kenneth McMillan, and what everyone wants everyone to know about the Southern Conference is it's not just about football. He is the academic advisor for Georgia Southern. And, Kenneth, exactly what you do with the athletes. Well, basically, my role is to offer emotional and academic support to the student-athlete here. Uh, we feel like we're here for the student-athlete, and they're here to get an education, and we want to offer whatever we can to help them to achieve their individual goals. Uh, it's not just about uh, the football field. It's all about uh, getting an education, preparing for life, learning to do what is right. All right, thank you very much, Kenneth McNeilan. Back to you guys. Thanks, Mitch. Second down and four. Quick hitter up the middle. The third down is going to be coming up. Rod Green just had nowhere to run. And you see the big guy, Alex Mash, had a lot to do with that. I think there's a real disparity in the in the size of these two offensive lines and in uh, Furman's case they're outweighed probably by, probably by as much as 25 pounds a man across the front and with the Georgia Southern defense which is not really an exceptionally big defense but when you're in that situation you've got to do some things to counteract that size and and running right at a lot of times it just doesn't work. And McClarty leaves now three wide receivers in the ball game for Furman on third down but they hand it off and it's going to be short of the first down Rod Green just did not have enough Michael Morris one of the Eagles to get to him also Nick Davis made the play looked like it was an offside maybe right before the snap of the ball it might have been Alex Mesh shifting over the center or is this going to go against Furman I thought it was Mash maybe making contact with the center right there. And uh, that would give him enough, a big mistake to give him enough for first down. Offside. On the defense. 
first down. That's Harold Bender making the call, so it is a first down for Furman. They start them early here in the southern part of Georgia. Mom knows he's on camera, too. She's smiling for the camera there. So a first down and 10. Furman moving the football after the 47. Billy Jones throws this one incomplete. Off the fingertips of Rod Green. That was close to a lateral. Yeah, they're not getting a lot out of their tight end uh, so far. You can see Rod Green, and as you mentioned, Kevin, about a lateral. He's just headed forward, just headed forward. That ball should have been caught, though, off his fingertips. But you look at uh, Furman and Scott Weil, Luther Broughton, a couple of the tight ends they have, 82-84. They're not getting a lot out of them in the passing game. Uh, they haven't caught a lot of passes coming into today's game, but I, that time they ran Broughton wide down the seam, and they didn't, they didn't look for him. You see, Philly Jones is getting it done, 9 of 15. <laughs> including the big 92-yard touchdown pass. McClarty cuts it up. Midfield, where a third down will be coming up for Furman. McClarty has found the going tough. He is only a sophomore. Got his first start last week at BMI and rushed for 118 yards. Furman is missing Billy Whitley. He's a senior from Lithonia, Georgia, and he is out with a hamstring pull. He's the leading rusher on this Furman team. Yeah, Billy had played behind Carl Trimble, who was uh, all Southern Conference, the leading rusher all time in the Southern Conference, and had not seen a lot of playing time. Put a lot of weight on, bulked up a little bit to play full time this year, and a hamstring injury has hindered him since preseason. Boy, Nick Davis, the middle linebacker, has come out to Georgia Southern, and he looks like he's in some big time pain. McCarty, going to be close to the first down, will depend on the spot. If McCarty had fallen down where he had caught the ball, he'd have had the first down. Tried to make a move and probably lost yardage. You're exactly right. Be aware of the sticks, and, and I think he's going to be short just because of that move. All he has to do is turn it upfield and let him tackle him. He has to be more aware of where he is. He's going to be almost a yard short just by turning out. Paul Carroll and Darius Dawson make sure that he doesn't get the first down, but it will be a fourth down coming up. And now coming off the sideline for Furman is Braniff Bonaventure, the backup quarterback. And he will go from the shotgun. <laughs> now whistles blow. Too much time. Tough or? to figure out exactly what Furman wants to do with this play. Dead ball. You see it. I mean, short yardage, fourth and one. And I don't know if Philly Jones is hurt, but do you do you bring in a, a quarterback that hasn't thrown a pass yet? Dead I'm, ball. There's no the way they game. want to throw this football. On the offense. Fourth down. And he has played in six games and has thrown the ball 32 times right at 60% completions. He's going to quit kicking. And does a pretty good job if this ball holds on, and it will. So Jimmy Satterfield pushed the right buttons there as Braniff Bonave Bonaventure got it away, and it turns out to be a 48-yard punt, and Georgia Southern is going to start deep in their own territory at the two-yard line. If it was uh, 15 years ago, uh, they would have done that on third down. But nice job by a quick kick. You don't see that often in football. You see they're attending to Nick Davis down there on the Georgia Southern sideline. He's in some pain. You yeah, can he see really is. It. Like he was holding his right shoulder. Mitch Glickens is probably going to give us an update here in a few minutes. So deep in their own territory, Georgia Southern will start from the two. And just getting out of the end zone is Bostic. Well, Mitch, give us an update on that injury. Uh, Mitch not quite able to ready just yet. But we'll go to him in just a moment. 425 to play here in the first half. 21 to 10 is the score as Georgia Southern leads it. They've got a lot of real estate in front of them right now as Bostic may have lost a half a yard on that first down play. We'll call it second down and 10. Bostic, the quick hitter. This is Williams, and Williams gets a little breathing room out to the 11-yard line. 
Anytime you're in the shadows of your own goalpost, you always welcome a play like that to get it out a little bit. Now let's go down and check in with Mitch Glick and Mitch. Right now, the problem with Nick Davis is a wrist. Now, they're not sure he's in immense pain if it's just a sprain or a possible break. Nick Davis is a vital part of the Eagle defense. He will be missed. They're not sure exactly what is the problem now, but it is the wrist. He did look like he was really in a lot of pain. Hand off straight up the middle. Not a lot there, but it should be enough for a Georgia Southern first down. Yep, they will move the sticks as Williams took it straight up the middle. Big senior from Thomasville, Georgia. Nothing fancy about him, but he just gets the job done. He comes into today's game. 48, or excuse me, 480 yards rushing on exactly 100 carries. So right at five yards a carry, you'll take that out of your big fullback. You have an 11-point lead, too. You, you can afford to be very cautious with your offense. This the misdirection. And not a whole lot there. That one was snuffed out quick. That was Shafton Fraley, who was on the handoff, but Milan Sterling would have nothing to do with it. And Sterling is really a big-time player coming in from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Milan Sterling reading the pulling guard, and that's what got him into that position as he, as he saw the guard, Michael Brown, pulling him back across the field. He just followed him, put him in position for the tackle. Also free safety, Mark Tate up there to disrupt the offense. Bostic looking for the quick hitter, has a man wide open, complete. Marlo Warthen. And if they had caught that in stride, no one would have gotten anywhere close to him. Warthen, a sophomore from Warrington, Georgia, the fastest man on this Georgia Southern team. Busted play in the secondary. Somebody's got a man up on Warthen coming out of the backfield, or if you want to call the slapback spot there, the Georgia Southern runs, but he is running free, and it's, it's got to be a busted play. Cavis Reed trying to make a play. Looks like they're going to take it back with a penalty, though. It was a 26-yard pickup, but you're right. This one's going to go back. On the offense, half the distance to the goal. Still second down. Harold Bender, our referee. And he did have good time. Maybe that's why he had so much time back there. <laughs> well, the Georgia Southern linemen have got a lot of weight for it. If you look at their offensive line stance, it's a run-blocking stance, and they do a good job of getting out of it to pass protect, but a lot of their, their passes have to be off some form of play action or option look in order for them to be successful. Quick hitter again at the middle, James Williams. Not a whole lot there. Patrick McGowan, first man to get there. Also Clayton Gibson, junior from Columbus, Georgia, making the play for Furman. As we count under two minutes to go, Stowers has seen his ball club go down in this ball game by 10 points and now come right back and lead it by 11. Tim Stowers in his fourth season, 32 up, 13 down. Yeah. <laughs> Darth Vader. How about the visor <laughs> look? I don't know how guys can see. I, I watch sometimes quarterbacks and wide receivers wearing those visors. I have no idea how they can catch the flight of the ball. Bostic in a lot of trouble. Back out to the line of scrimmage and a fourth down will be coming up for Georgia Southern. So Furman should get it back with decent field position. I might stop that clock uh, right I now. I think I agree. I'd, I'd burn one here with counting down to 60 seconds left in this first half. You're not going to give yourself much time offensively unless you've got block on your mind. Bill Thatcher with a 40-yard average. You see what he's done today. Andre Worrell catches it, takes two steps, and goes down. So a 40-yard kick, a return of two. And bad news from the sideline. Nick Davis, we've got an official word, has a broken left ulna. So that's that wrist bone. And he is being escorted out off, to, off the, to our left, heading to the sideline. Now let's go down. Mitch Glicken stands by. Give us an update, Mitch. Guys, I just talked to Doc Smith, the head trainer for Georgia Southern. It is a broken wrist for Nick Davis. He will not be back. Maybe lost for the season. Huey Hunt will have to come in and pick up the slack. Back to you. All right, his first down catch is made. Boy, you hate to see that for anybody. Josh Cole made that. Braniff Bonaventure is now in the ball game at quarterback. And there you see him. 
that's a big blow to Georgia Southern, not just so much for the day, but you got to think playoffs going into the postseason, and that is a key part of this Georgia Southern defense. Number 99. And Alex Mash made that play. But we'll see Furman will run it one more play before halftime. As Bonaventure will just put this one up if he can get a chance, but he can't. So Georgia Southern's defense comes to the forefront. Edward Thomas, a freshman from Atlanta, makes the play to end the first half of play. So zeros on the board as far as the time is concerned, but not as far as the score. Georgia Southern leads it 21 to 10. It's been an exciting first half, a big play first half. Statesboro, Georgia, where a fresh 15 minutes is on the clock, and we're ready to get underway here in the third quarter with Georgia Southern leading at 21 to 10. 21 unanswered points from the Eagles of Georgia Southern, and they will have the football to start here in the second half. As Chris Wright will back nine yards deep and take a knee, and that's where Georgia Southern will come out to the 20-yard line to start off first down and 10. And uh, neither defense has really been able to do, have much of a stopping effect on the offenses so far in this first half. No, you're right. The big plays, the big runs by Georgia Southern, the big passing plays uh, by Furman, I think, have kept both defenses a little bit off balance. And uh, I'm sure they've had time, though, to make some adjustments here at halftime. And, and I think the most interesting are the injury situation uh, of Philly Jones. We did not see late in the, the second half uh, against Georgia Southern and Nick Davis uh, now on his way to the hospital for Georgia, Georgia Southern's defense. Well, Charles Bostic under center. A junior from Thomasville pitches it back. Marlo Warthen. Warthen wrestled out of bounds. Milan Sterling at the big time play. The weak side linebacker. He's the number one tackler in the Southern Conference and you see why. Here's a guy who's got a flash uh, for the Furman defense uh, kind of quiet in that first half. He's bothered a little bit by injury. Does a nice job of avoiding the block by Joey Cushing and then chasing Marlo Warthen out there. He's got the outside pitch man. Sometimes you'll see him force on Bostic when he has the quarterback. When he gets outside, he's got to have the speed and he certainly shows it. Sterling, a converted defensive end at weak side linebacker in the NFL, say they want to play him at a strong safety. He's got that kind of speed. 4 6, supposedly in the 40. That's flying. Quarterback draw, Bostic looking to pick a hole, and Gibson will take him down. Helped out by Milan Sterling. So a third down and long coming up for Georgia Southern. That give you an idea just how creative, though, Bostic is, because a lot of people would have lost yardage on this play. Yeah, whenever Georgia Southern wants to make a play, though, they keep the hands, the ball in the hands of their quarterback, Joe Dupree or Charles Bostic, and they really like the quarterback draw. You'll never see them hardly run a fullback draw, a classic uh, a three-step drop draw, but it's always the quarterback. Good job by Furman's defense. Third down and 10. Bostic rolls the pocket. And cuts up will be well short of the first down. Milan Sterling again on three plays. We've called his name three times. I think he had a little attitude adjustment in, in the uh, locker room at halftime as if he needed one came out and was big time on that first series. Yeah, once again, I think in, uh, as Spostick's rolling out, though, he's looking more for the run rather than the pass. Andre Worrell back deep. This is going to be a short cut. Worrell will call for a fair catch and make it at the 47-yard line. So Furman will start it off with good field position. When we come back, 13.43 to go, 36 to go on the clock. McClarty. And this time, nothing there. Good coverage up front. Lee Brooks, the first man to get to him. Also, Paul Carroll in on the stop for Georgia Southern. Most Gain of a, of a yard on that one. The second down and nine coming up. You know, most of their success today has been when they opened the series with a pass on first down. And, and it, it's been a positive yard. Philly Jones has been pretty accurate so far this afternoon. But whenever they've opened up with a run on first down, it, it, they find themselves a lot of times in second and nine or second and long, and that's hurt this offense. So Philly Jones from the gun. Underneath, complete. And inside the 30-yard line goes Josh Cole, true freshman from Dalton, Georgia. That's his fifth reception of the season, second of the afternoon. 
Well, Darius Dawson, he's a, a very fine linebacker and all-Southern Conference defender, but Josh Cole has got the quicks on him here as a wide receiver. Trying to man up Josh Cole with Darius Dawson. Cole should win as Jones delivers the ball as he does there. That's a pickup of 11. We count down 11 and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Furman on the march inside the 30-yard line from the 28. Hand it to the first man through, Rod Green. Again, only a head for a couple. Interior line of Georgia Southern has not been fooled all afternoon. Lee Brooks, Alex Mash, Walter Flowers, Michael Morris, Charles Burke, all those guys up front doing a heck of a job. Ken Stowers says the strength of his defense is really the linebackers, but the guys up front have done a pretty good job today. Well, they do a good job week in and week out. And looking at Furman now, this is a very young line for them. Only John Ludwig, the senior right tackle, has any experience other than this year. Pitch back McCarty, cuts it back against the grain. McCarty made a lot out of nothing. He's near a first down. He stopped, started, changed direction, stopped, started, changed direction again. Yep. Real nice job on the back side, uh, uh, sealing that off the center, Morgan. Uh, he's the one that gets the good back block, and I think that's on Lee Brooks that opens that hole up to the back side where McClarty's able to make some room, and then it's all Leo McClarty picking him up. Carl, Paul Carroll had a shot at him at the line of scrimmage, and an arm tackle around that leg's not gonna do much. McClarty goes ahead, picks up the first down. So first and 10 from the 18-yard line. Again, the quick hitter up the middle, and it's gonna pick up two or three yards for Rod Green. Alex Mash now, he's kind of hobbling, uh, Kevin, looking at him. He's come off the field once and now coming back in. He's really favoring that ankle, and that's gonna really slow him down from what he does best, and that's to pursue the football, cause plays for losses in the backfield or sacks. That's really a compliment to Alex Mash, though, because basically what the coaching staff is saying is an injured Alex Mash is still better than no Alex Mash. For second down and seven. Furman deep inside Georgia Southern Territory, gun complete. Bo Davis made the catch, a freshman from Marietta, Georgia. That's his sixth reception of the year. Just a simple slant in. He's got fine protection. Nice job by Morgan, the center, blocking on Flowers there. And uh, he, he gets that man protection against hits in the safety, picks it in. Tell you what, Bo Davis, I think that's the first play he has been in today. Big receiver, about 6'2", 190. Probably caught some balls from Eric Zire. McClarty hit at the line of scrimmage, will drive forward for maybe a gain of a couple, but Scott Davis hit him Ben in the backfield. McClarty just pure, pure strength goes ahead for a couple. So a second down and goal. Scott Davis been playing a lot for Georgia Southern lately uh, due to the injury to Paul Carroll. Now with Nick Davis out there, Paul Carroll back at middle linebacker. Scott Davis seeing a lot of action. He's one that had the interception earlier. He's made a, a couple of nice solo tackles today. Paul Rangy linebacker. Second down goal. Play action. Jones looking for the corner and throws it away. He was intended for Scott Wild. And now a third down and goal is coming. And wise play that time by Philly Jones. If it's not there, don't try to press it in. Yeah, that was well covered by Georgia Southern. Double tights, and they, they, they had everybody pretty well blanketed, looking for a tight end sneak of some kind. But I, I don't understand why you don't roll a Philly Jones out. Get him out of that pocket. He's been very accurate throwing from the drop back, but he's an option-style quarterback. I believe he could probably throw in the run also. The junior from Winder, Georgia. You see his numbers on the afternoon. And Furman is going to take a timeout with 821 left. They want to talk it over here. Up, oh, Furman is deep inside. 21 to 10 with eight minutes, 21 seconds left. With Jeff Van Noot, Mitch Blicken, I'm Kevin Eschenfelder from Statesboro, Georgia, where Furman is threatening. Big third down. Rod Green, the single setback. 
And they hand it to Green. Green stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Paul Carroll stepped into the hole. And we got a fourth down coming up. Well, you're going to challenge him. You want to run right behind uh, uh, Jim Peavy on the left side. Brian Fisher, your young offensive tackle. Paul Carroll, he's all over that football. He was their leading tackler last year, bothered by a neck injury this year. And he put his head right in there. He fills that hole like a linebacker should, especially a middle linebacker. So now a field goal try. Jim Richard, who already has one today. Make it two and make it an eight-point ball game. 21-13 as Richard kicks it through. And that breaks a snap, snaps a streak of 21 straight points for Georgia Southern. So 7.37 to play, 21-13 our score. No matter who you want to win this game, it's been a good football game. Southern Conference football here on Sports South. 7.37 to go, 21-13. And there you see Western Carolina, number 20 in the nation, leading VMI 17 to nothing. Adwin at the intermission. You know, they have a specialized kickoff man, Chad Jackson, 28 for Furman. And, uh, I think after Wright ran that one back last year against them, this guy gets in the end almost every time. Especially with this window is back. Wright's going to bring this one out. And Wright did the wise thing. Instead of taking it at the 20, gets it out past the 30-yard line. So Chris Wright, who really turned the ball game around last year up in Greenville with a 94-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, gets a good return out here to the 32-yard line. So with seven and a half minutes to go, halfway through the third quarter of play, 21-13. Georgia Southern leads it. Furman went out to a 10-0 lead. Georgia Southern came back with 21 unanswered. And Furman with three here early in the third quarter. Let's go down and check in with our sideline man, Mitch Glicken. Mitch. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Joined now by Frank Kearns, the head basketball here coach at Georgia Southern. And, uh, Coach, I know you're excited about being in the Southern Conference. You own the 28th best Division I record over the last 10 years. I know you're proud of your team. Well, we've had an awfully good run, and uh, we're sort of reloading this year. Uh, the conference is going to be uh, very, very difficult, uh, and we're kind of getting ready over the last week and looking forward to getting started in a few weeks. Last year, you were picked to finish a little higher in the conference. This year, I know you're a little bit down, but I know you're excited with your perimeter play. Yeah, I think we're going to have outstanding ability to shoot the three-point shot on the perimeter and uh, ability to penetrate uh, inside. We're really concerned with our power game and physical, so but we're looking forward to it. All right, Frank Kearns, the head coach, thanks for joining us. Back to you guys. All right, Ryan Livesey comes up with the big turnover, the second turnover of the day for Georgia Southern. Here you see Bostic. He's going to option to the wide side, and he pitches this ball a little bit late. Marlo Warthen is catching it off his back shoulder after a nice block by Williams on Emsley. He had some running room if he's able to get that, but that ball is late off his back shoulder. So the Paladins with another opportunity. First man handing it off, and not a whole lot there is Rod Green. Darius Dawson, the weak side linebacker, stepped into the hole. Also Michael Morris. Number two team in the country. Marshall leads East Tennessee State. 23 to 3 that one in the third quarter and the thundering herd continues to roll well, second and nine again you put yourself in a position where you have to pass almost to, to create something they go play action Billy Jones open man and it's caught Rick Ford with not a defender within five to eight yards of him yeah, I think the uh, outside linebacker, Scott Davis, he's not out in that hook zone. They do a nice job of Bradley pulling out Rob Stockton and really clearing it out. But look at all that area inside between Sean Austin and the receiver, Rick Ford. Rick, uh, Scott Davis, the outside linebacker, has got to get back, get into that view of the passer. A gain of 17 yards. Furman on first down and 10. From the 15-yard line, 
Jones a little misdirection, but it was directed right in the hands of Scott Davis because Davis, the outside linebacker, came up and made the stop. Yeah, he says, hey, I just made a mistake. I've got to do something to help my football team, and he does right here. It's his penetration, his, his reading of what's happening, and, and his aggressiveness that causes that play to have nowhere to go. Scott Davis, 55, Wheeler High School, Marietta, Georgia. He's a junior, 6'1", 206 is what they list him as. From the 15-yard line, there you see the time remaining in the third quarter. McClarty cuts it back again, and he'll fall forward for a couple. But a big, big third down is coming up. Darius Dawson, again, the senior from Moultrie, Georgia, made the stop from the weak linebacker spot. This McClarty is a hard-running young sophomore, and I think is a guy that they hope to develop. He's 5'9", 204, but he's got some sprinter speed, and, and he really runs hard. Even there, he, he's going to fall for an extra yard. If they're going to use their running attack, uh, rather than green, if you want to run up the middle out of the eye lead, I'd use McClarty. Big third down, the crowd on its feet. Extra defensive back in the game for Georgia Southern. Into the end zone. A flag is down, and it's a touchdown. It doesn't matter. Danny Britt made contact with the receiver, but it doesn't matter. It's a touchdown. Well, tough enough to catch a ball with all those bodies down in that end zone, but Danny Britt is a contact way before the ball reaches Damon Bradley. He concentrates on it, pulls it in. Furman, uh, you know, they're, they're not quitting here today, down 21-10 at half. They, they've come back with good field position twice and done something with it. I think it was Adric Harrison on the catch. It was hard to tell because there was so much <laughs> interference. No, you're right, it was Damon Bradley. And now, Damon Bradley having some uh, words with the sideline. Are we talking uh, uh, the touchdown signal was given? Is there a... Okay. Oh. oh, no, 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 John Ludwig, no, no, no. Official did not catch that by the Furman right tackle. Had his hand right up in, in the, was that Michael Morris's face or Ed Thomas? I, I didn't see the number on the, on the rushing it Southern was Michael line. Morris. Yeah, it, it had to be defensive holding down deep in, in the, uh, in the oh, they didn't give him interference. It, they're calling defensive holding there. So Furman will go for two. A lot of pressure thrown in the end zone, tipped up, and incomplete. Well, you thought Rick Ford may have had it, but just off his fingertips. Anytime you see a ball up in the air for that long a period of time, anybody can get to it. Rick Ford almost did. Well, 4.19 to go, that's nine unanswered points for Furman as we have a 21 to 19 ball game. 10 points straight off the top for Furman to start the ball game. Then Georgia Southern comes back with 21 unanswered. And Furman comes back here in the third quarter with nine unanswered. So uh, it's been a seesaw affair. The odd, odd quarters have gone to Furman. The even quarter so far has gone to Georgia Southern. Well, when you're playing a team like Georgia Southern, they, they're great against the uh, scoring points. Uh, they only have 20 punt returns on the year, so you have to feel like that your people are moving the ball a little bit between uh, the, the tens or between the goal lines, but they're not giving up many points. They didn't many last year. I think it's only 12.7 points per game this year for Tommy Spangler's a defensive unit, so you've got to take them out of that mode somehow, and how do you do it? You do the pass a lot of times. A lot of college teams don't want to play the pass. Today, Philly Jones has had a a real fine day of success thrown against this Georgia Southern pass defense. And the penalty will have the kick coming from the 50 yard line. You see the uh, scoring drive, five plays. They only had to go 33 yards and did it in two and a half minutes. And Harrison made the catch from 13 yards out. Well, I've seen teams in the past uh, uh, use this uh, penalty here when they, they picked up 15 yards with an onside. They're on, sitting on the 50. I've seen teams use this with an onside kick knowing that uh, they have to have a lot of confidence in their defense. He should kick this one out of a stadium. No chance for that one. 
Georgia Southern with the football. And it's going to bring up a third down situation. A couple of runs by James Williams. And a big third down it's going to be because the momentum is definitely going towards the Paladins right now. Yeah. How about that one? Youngstown State and Indiana State. That is now a final. Number one team in the nation winning by a touchdown. And that was at home, too. So the Penguins struggling a little bit this afternoon, but coming away with the win over Indiana State. So third down. Bostic hit in the backfield, and Georgia Southern will have to punt it away. A good job by the Furman defense. Andre Worrell, the cornerback, came up, really didn't have a, anything to hit anybody about, but he was the one that kind of forced the play. Yeah, you see the upside back backer, Brent Solomon. He makes a choice right now in Charles Bostic, and I think it's Charles Bostic indecision more than anything that allows Furman to close on that football play. And uh, three, three, three series now. Georgia Southern has done very little. Look up here, fake, and it's going to work. It will work big. Well, I tell you what, Bill Thatcher just saw everybody turn around and get ready for the return. And that's a run of 24 yards, a heads-up play for Bill Thatcher, a senior from Statesboro. Well, you can't be dead certain that it was pre-called or, or not, but you, you saw him hesitate, and they've been reading what Furman's been doing on their punt. But everybody's kind of running down the field, and some guys are, are, are getting in a position to block uh, people as if they knew it was going to be a run if it, if it presented itself from the lineup of Furman, and it certainly did. Good job by Thatcher, and you saw, as soon as he saw somebody saw him running with the football, he was looking for the sideline. He had his first down, and he was ready to get off the field. Right up the middle with James Williams, and maybe a gain of a yard. A big 24-yard run, and Bill Thatcher, see if maybe that lights a fire under this offense for Georgia Southern. Yeah, after they got that blocked punt for a field goal, Georgia Southern has certainly cooled off, and in what they've been doing offensively. And uh, uh, the fullback inside just has not been working. Charles Bostic has been a little de decisive, and he's also made a mistake with a fumble. Somebody goes over there and, and says, thank you for bailing us out on that series. And once again, special teams comes to the rescue for Georgia Southern. Second down and nine from midfield. Bostic to throw. Bostic looking for right. Incomplete. Good coverage for Furman that time by John Ensley. Senior from Dandridge, Tennessee. As that strong safety was stride for stride with Chris Wright. Boy, Emsley's given a good cushion, too. Wright's got a lot of speed, and, and I think Georgia Southern got what they wanted. Man up on the outside, Cavis Reed against Bradley, and also Chris Wright one-on-one -on -one against a strong safety. Georgia Southern racking it up on the ground. But I think they're going to have to go to the air here on third down and nine. Bostic pumps once, loses the football. Paladin football. That's big because Georgia Southern was in a position to really pin Furman deep in their own territory with a punt. And while their offense have been pretty efficient the first half, the second half it isn't. I think that's Michael Hardy that with the tackle on the backside. No, it isn't. It's Livesey, who he's the number 85, the guy who knocks the ball loose. His pursuit come from the backside. But while they've been efficient the first half, the second half, they have not had any kind of offense. Leighton Gibson, a junior from Columbus, Georgia, made the recovery. All the breaks have gone the way of Furman here in the third quarter. That's the third turnover of the afternoon against Georgia Southern. Philly Jones looking big on first down, and he almost answered right back with a turnover. Sean Austin should have had the pick, the senior from Thomasville, Georgia. Joe Dupree warming up that arm on the sideline. He's been warming up and taking a couple snaps for the last couple of series. He's about 90% healthy. Joe Dupree and has been the starter, got the starting job as he came out of spring practice, but he's had a few injuries this year, an index finger, a foot, and a knee the last couple of weeks, but they feel like he's almost ready 100%. Don't let that graphic fool you. Usually when you see a quarterback, you see his passing numbers, not at Georgia Southern. And Philly Jones just gets rid of it. I tell you what, 
Furman lucky they didn't get a holding call. Let's go down onto the field. Yo. Mitch Glickson. Guys, uh, Joe Dupree has been warming up. He's wearing a knee brace after that knee injury a couple of weeks ago at Appalachian State. Now, Joe Dupree is 100% healthy. The problem has been he's not been used to the knee. He's been a little tentative, but it appears he is ready to go. And when the Eagles get the ball back, he's going to be in there. Okay, so they will come back with Joe Dupree. Well, I tell you what, Jim Miller, lucky he didn't get a, a holding call in that last play. Look at that, Furman with 251 passing yards. Georgia Southern has not thrown for a single yard. On the draw play, McClarty, cloud of dust back to the line of scrimmage. Fourth down coming up, and a huge defensive stand for the Georgia Southern defense. Here's what you do here. Uh, you're looking at a prevent defense, three-man line. All of a sudden, Danny Britt, the safety, comes into the game. Alex Mash out, and they blitz him. Danny Britt comes in in a blitzing situation. Instead of a prevent, you got a blitz-type defense and the perfect defense for the draw. Ronnie McCutcheon to punt it away with the win. 45 seconds left, and it's blocked. Picked up by Austin. Francis Williams blocked it again. And once again, the Georgia Southern special teams rise to the top. I think that uh, once again, the snap, this is, not a, this is not real high, but it's still a little bit high. And if you look at this punter, uh, McCutcheon, he is a very methodical, tall, he takes his time type of a punter. And I think that gives Georgia Southern a lot of time. Brancis Williams really stretches out nicely for it, though. That is the seventh blocked punt of the year for Georgia Southern. Now Dupree in the ball game hands it up to Williams. And a little bit of a spark now for the Georgia Southern offense as Williams fights ahead for nearly five yards right up the middle. That is amazing, though. Seven blocked punts. Well, that's what they want to win here. This is their style. You have to have strong defense. You see Brancis Williams on the sidelines. Uh, there's helmet off, people congratulating him. And well, they should. He's, he's been involved in two blocks today. But kicking game, special teams, turnover, and a solid run game is what they're trying to develop. So far this half, they haven't had that solid run game. A couple of mistakes by Charles Bostic. Well, three down, one to go, and we have had a heck of a ball game. Don't go away, we'll have the finish when we come back. Georgia as Joe Dupree under center with his Eagles leading at 21 to 19. Chris Wright has good yardage, a first down, and he's knocked out of bounds. Let's check in with Mitch Glicken. Mitch. Guys, good news for Georgia Southern. There you see Nick Davis. He is back in the stadium. What happened is he dislocated the ulna. Tomorrow they will go in and set it. Hopefully they'll be able to pop it into place without having to work with the ligaments. He'll be in a hard cast for three weeks, but he'll be on a wait-and-see basis if he can play next week or the week following. But they expect him back this season. Yeah, a cast on a defensive man is like a little weapon <laughs> if, if you can pad it up uh, well Sp enough. Spoken like a true offensive lineman. I've seen a lot of guys on defense play with cast. Chris Wright picked up 10 there. This is James Williams and Williams for a gain of a yard. Just underway, fourth quarter. Good crowd on hand today. 17,984, so just under 18,000 on hand. And they are everywhere today. Sitting on the hillside, even though the sun has kind of gone behind the clouds. And these guys never stop coaching. Second down, seven. Dupree, again, right, gets the corner. Cuts it back at the 15, and he's down to the 13-yard line. Once Chris Wright gets around the corner, he's tough to stop. That, that has worked for him most of the day. I don't know why they haven't stayed with it. The consistent offense running away from Livesey, uh, the number 85, the All-Southern Conference defensive end on the other side, running at Brett and Solomon. This place, it's Todd Kramer, number 41, is his replacement. But you make the pitch early enough, as Furman declares, and Wright's got enough speed to find a nice hole outside, and they, they always get good downfield blocking out of Dawson or Darren Williams. That's 25 yards on the exact same play the last two times. They'll fly it again. Shafton Fraley. Fraley in a race for the cone. He's out of bounds at the three-yard line. Make it the four. Shafton Fraley, you see, he's in a soft cast right there. He had some ligament damage. And between Chris Wright and Shafton Fraley, get this, 
they average right at eight yards a carry. See Darren Willis right there, tremendous block on J Jason Ensley, the safety, and I'm not sure if they're gonna say to hit him with his forearm up around the head, and maybe a, a flag, a personal foul, a unnecessary roughness against it is. It's going to be against Georgia Southern, maybe for that block, I think. I think the preliminary call was holding. We'll see. The Eagles moves the ball back to the Furman 21. Holding on the offense. Still first down. Well, you're right, Kevin. They're calling holding. And it, I, it, it just seemed like he let him have the block up around the head with his, uh, with his forearm. And... Uh, and afterwards stood over him for just a second, but maybe it was a hole somewhere else down the field. The first down, 20 to go. Big hole for Dupree, flagged down, and so is Dupree down near the five-yard line. Andre Worrell made the stop, but I think this one's coming back as well. That's dead ball, illegal procedure. Well, the line judge on the far side threw that flag immediately at the snap of the ball. Dead ball, false start on the offense, first down. Harold Bender, our referee. I'm not sure, I, I'm looking at a little bit of that replay. It, Was it eight? Exactly what had happened, unless the ball came up late from the center, Franklin Stevens. Maybe Miguel Ayub, I think the left guard may have gone a little bit early. James Williams right up the middle. But Milan Sterling there to greet him. Also, Brent Solomon, Jr. from Fort Valley, Georgia, in to stuff that hole. He's a 6'2", Jr. from Fort Valley, Georgia. 37 Georgians on this roster for Furman, uh, 30 on their traveling squad, and both these teams, Georgia Southern and Furman, uh, they compete for the Georgia high school talent. Uh, this is a recruiting battle on both sidelines. There's a lot of prospects that uh, both schools are entertaining. Good point, lead option. Dupree pitches it back. Chris Wright again around the corner inside the 10 yard line. I tell you what, I think I run that play until somebody stops it. Well, he does a great job this time of optioning Livesey. He waits to the last minute as he brings it down the line and strings him out a little bit. And it's the timing of the pitch on the option, which is so important. Also, the downfield blocking. The receivers of Georgia Southern do a good job of that. They're not getting the ball a lot of times on pass, but they're excellent blockers. Last three times they've run that play, as you see Wright's numbers, they have picked up 43 yards, 18, 15, and 10. They'll try it again, cutting it up to the five-yard line as Joe Dupree, and Dupree goes down there. He should be very close to a Georgia Southern first down. Somebody down for Furman. Looks like Clayton Gibson. Tim Stowers looking on, and there you see Todd Kramer, the junior from Marietta, Georgia. Appears to be the paladin that is down. You bring up a good point. This is a big recruiting game. And we'll talk more about that, see more of this fourth quarter when we come back. 21-19 the count with 12-19 to play. Gibson. I said Todd I said that with Todd Kramer. It's not 41, it's 47. Gibson goes to the bench. And now Georgia Southern and the person of Reed Haley will try to kick a field goal here. Extend that lead to a five-point ball game. Ball back down, kick is up. And perfect. So Reed Haley knocks it through and makes our new score 24 to 19. A 22-yard kick for Reed Haley, and we're gonna take a timeout. When we come back, we'll have 12.09 to play. 24-19. With 12.09 left, Georgia Southern leads it 24 to 19. And the ball will come out to the 20 yard line where Furman will scrimmage first down and 10. There's a score from this afternoon's action, 24 to seven. Number 20, Western Carolina is leading in the third quarter. Also, one we just received, I believe it's a final to Citadel over Tennessee Chattanooga, 34-27. And Furman has given Georgia Southern all they've wanted this afternoon. As you can tell by the score, five-point ball game. Billy Jones has had a career afternoon. 
Going for over 250 yards. This is McClarty. McClarty back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Sean Austin came up from the cornerback spot, got the first lick in. Then Paul Carroll came in to finish him off. That's one of the best things Georgia Southern does is team pursuit. It's hard to get outside on them uh, when you dance. You've got to go right at it and hit that hole and hope you've got a little bit of a hole if you've got the blocking. But you're not going to get wide on them too often. And then certainly Furman hasn't done that today with its offense running attack. Not quite three yards of carry for McClarty. Billy Jones gets rid of it, incomplete. Better get on that ball. Rob Green. Let the referees make a, a rule and get on that ball. That's a couple that Rod Green has not been able to handle. He fumbled a couple times last week, and uh, he's got to be questioning the hands a little bit. Yeah, he, he hasn't caught many balls coming into this game, and uh, you can't really see the angle if the ball is a lateral or not, but uh, you should always get on a ball. Rod Green's only caught six balls all year, and he's missed two today. Where This ball's thrown a little bit behind him, though. Big third down. Third down and nine from the 21-yard line. Billy Jones has his man and a first down. McClarty out to the 35, make it the 36-yard line. A gain of 17 yards on third down and nine. If there's been some confusion today, it's with the linebacker play as who to pick up coming out of the backfield. First back out, Scott Davis looks like he's got Rod Green. Second back out, maybe that should be Carroll, the inside linebacker. He is running free, though, five, six, seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Past the line of scrimmage, not behind it. Counting down to 11 minutes to go in the ball game. Furman on first down and 10. McClarty again, loves to cut it back high, steps it out for a gain of eight yards. Out to the 45 yard line where he got way late. Dominic Turner, I believe, was the eagle that put the hit on him. Nice job by Andrew Deese, the, the center, doing a good job blocking on Alex Mash. This play is designed to go front side instead because of the block of Deese staying with Mash. There's a big hole back off his left side, and that's where McClarty finds the hole and cuts it. It was a gain of nine, so second down and one. First man has the first down, Rod Green. Bo Davis and Brandon Roselle talking things over there. You see at the bottom of the screen. Cooler heads prevailed, and it's a first down as they move the sticks across the way. Georgia Southern has come up with some uh, blocks on their special teams play, but other than the interception, they haven't gotten much from this offense in, in the case of turnovers uh, from Furman. They're going to need something now. Furman is showing some relentlessness. From the 48-yard line. And now into Eagle territory goes Rod Green. Pick up of a couple. Walter Flowers filling up the screen nicely and filling up that hole. A freshman from Savannah. He weighs in at 260 pounds. They've been able to rotate a few defensive linemen in and out of there. Ed Thomas and Lee Brooks, Walter Flowers. Uh, and this because of the, the injury a little bit to Alex Mash today. This ankle are really starting to bother him as the game progresses along, I think. You see the situation from midfield. 9-10 to play in the ball game. Billy Jones has his man complete. Rick Ford has a first down and goes out of bounds. Now let's go down with an injury report, Mitch Glicken. Keith, I just spoke with Furman head trainer Bruce Getz, who says Clayton Gibson will miss the rest of the game. The linebacker may have torn up his knee. They're not sure how bad it is yet. It'll be a wait and see situation, but for now he will not be back today. All right, thanks, Mitch. There you see him on the sideline. Yeah, got some ice on it, keep that swelling down and uh, make an evaluation on it tomorrow. First down and 10. 9.02 left straight up the middle, McClarty. Met by Paul Carroll. But good offensive line surge at that time. Really hit at the line, of, looked like it was a line of scrimmage, but the line of scrimmage was moved two yards downfield by the offensive line. You're right, they're doing a good job. They're, they're outsized by 
Georgia Southern, but Peavy that time blocking on Alex Mash. That ankle is really starting to bother him, I think, but they're getting some good play out of Deese in the middle there, and also their right guard, Michael Brown, who they think is going to be the next great offensive lineman at Furman. The referee wants to stop the clock, and he is going to go over and talk it over. We're going to step out and take care of some business with eight and a half minutes to go. This is third down situation for Furman. A third down and two to keep the drive alive. McClarty won't get there. A big play by Rob Stockton and company, and Georgia Southern has forced a fourth down situation. So on third down and two, Furman actually loses three, and it makes it a fourth down and five. Philly Jones, the junior from Winder, Georgia, having a huge afternoon, but his team trails 24-19. Throws, it's caught, but I, nope, it's incomplete. I didn't think it was gonna be enough for the first down. It was intended for Josh Cole, and the Georgia Southern Eagle defense has held. Could have been intercepted too. Darius Dawson, number five, Inside linebacker playing that ball inside out. He's got time. I think he I think he needs to take a little bit more time on this play. He's that, that's well covered. Brandon Roselle and Darius Dawson all over Josh Cole. Another step for Darius Dawson, and we're lining up for the extra point right now. Yes. Whereas he would have had a lot of real estate in front of him and no one to stop him from taking it. Right up the middle. James Williams scoots for a gain of seven, and that's what Georgia Southern needs with six and a half minutes left on a moving clock here in Statesboro, Georgia. A second down and one. Boy, Williams has had a big day from that fullback spot. He's not the big play feature guy. But when they go to him, he has produced as he moves it into Paladin territory at the 49-yard line. Georgia Southern is going to want to keep it on the ground and chew up some time. Not that they put it in the air today or very much in all this whole season. Well, they're going to be very cautious, I think, with the football. Uh, you're looking at Leo McClarty. Uh, he wishes he enjoys the same kind of blocking maybe today that, that Williams has had, the big day he's had this afternoon. Is it my imagination, or does he look just like Herschel Walker? He in had, the face. Did there's you a striking that? resemblance. It doesn't run like Herschel uh, yet, no, but he's no. only a sophomore. He's just a young man, and he's got a couple more years at a, in, a, in an offense that features running backs. Tim Stowers wants to call a timeout, and he will. We're going to step out, 542 to go. We got a good one going in the fourth quarter. Georgia Southern leads 24 to 19. Twenty-four to nineteen on a gray day here in Statesboro, Georgia. We got a little Southern Conference trivia for you. You know, the Southern Conference has been around since 1921. Originally, it included a lot of members that are presently in the SEC and the ACC. Now, here's one of the great players out of one of those institutions. Went to the University of Kentucky, the former <laughs> Wildcat. Name that man, and you win uh, dinner with Jeff Van Noat. Who is that, Jeff? Well, I don't recognize the hair. That's for sure. <laughs> That is the former Atlanta Falcon, the two-time All-Pro, 1974 and 1975. Played 18 years with the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> Trivia question. I think you might see a lot of these Southern Conference teams in the SEC maybe in three years. Uh, hence, as Bucky Wagner, Dr. Wagner, the athletic director, talked about at halftime. A first and ten call for Joe Dupree. Again, Chris Wright. Wright counted off at 11 yards and a first down. Chris Wright has been unstoppable on that option around the corner this afternoon. They've done a good job of softening him up in the middle using Williams, and then as, as Furman closes their defense in, Wright coming wide all afternoon. And this has been a kind of a, a, a series of progressions for Georgia Southern's offense as the season has gone along. Get the ball to Fraley and Wright. Injured player down on the field. I believe that's Jason Ensley, senior from Dandridge, Tennessee. And they are attending to him. And you know, when you look down at the roster, seeing someone from Tennessee is really a, a strange thing to see. 37, like you said, 37 players on the Furman roster are from right here in the state of Georgia. 
And while I was talking with Tim Stowers the other day, as you take a look now across the way at Jimmy Satterfield, this is a big recruiting ball game. It's a lot easier to come into Georgia and say, well, look, we took care of Georgia Southern a year ago. You see the numbers that that man has put up, 65, 27, and 3 in eight years at Furman. Well, two one double A coaches of the year on the field today. Jimmy Satterfield, uh, he did it at Furman early in his career, and he's had he's been involved with uh, nine conference championships up there as an offensive coordinator and a head coach. And, and of course, Tim Stowers, the great record he's had since taking over from Irk Russell, the championships here at Georgia Southern. Nearly 18,000 fans on hand today. Great crowd on an afternoon where the weather was really threatening. And you take a look at some scores from today. Marshall, the number two team in the country with two minutes left, leads at 26 to nine. So it looks like the Thundering Herd will go to five and one in Southern Conference play. They continue to attend to the strong safety, Jason Ensley. And it was really didn't see anything out of the ordinary what happened on that last play. But both teams have left, basically left the field or over at respective hash marks, talking it over with their coaching staff. Let's see if we can see what happened. Well, it looks like Dexter Dawson comes back on Ensley, the, uh, the strong safety as he's trying to force, comes back and puts a block on him. A, uh, and it caught him maybe up high in the chest or, or the rib area, possibly uh, knocked the wind out of him. Let's hope that that's the seriousness of it, just the wind being knocked out of him. And now Ensley. is still really not moving. So we're going to take a timeout. We'll come back and check on him with 5.32 to play. We'll have an injury update when we come back. 24-19 the score. Jason Inslee is now up and is going off the field. Watch the very right side of the screen. As you see, Dexter Dawson gets the block there. You see Inslee go down, holding the rib cage, and he is walking off, as you see, on his own power. Yeah, it looked uh, like he really got his breath knocked out. It's a very, if you're not expecting it, you're not playing for it, and uh, it's a very surprising. Let's hope there's no uh, rib damage to Jason Ensley, but Georgia Southern's receivers do a fine job of downfield blocking and springing their outside guys. You know, they're not real big receivers, but boy, they pack a wallop whenever somebody's not looking. Straight up the gut, James Williams looking to whittle some time off of that clock as we go under five and a half minutes to play from Statesboro, Georgia. Georgia Southern leading 24 to 19. They have the football and what has been a very well played football game. Neither team penalized very much. Georgia Southern has turned it over three times. Furman has turned it over but once. So we have seen a well-played football game, and the uh, result, a five-point difference with five minutes left in the game. Joe Dupree, a junior from Macon, Georgia, hands off James Williams, dead ball. As soon as I say it's not been a very penalized game, they throw the flags. Well, I'm sure Coach Stowers would like to see his team control this football, run this game out. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense, still second down. Harold Bender making the call. So it's a final in Huntington, 33 to nine. Marshall, the number two team in the country, continues to roll. Number one, Youngstown State beat Indiana State by seven this afternoon. Here's the reverse. Dexter Dawson eludes one man. Dawson down to the 10-yard line where Andre Worrell saved a touchdown. A 30-yard run for the sophomore from Camilla, Georgia. First down, here we go. Well, you think it reverses, usually it's the, it goes very wide. Patrick McGowan reads it well for Furman, and Dexter Dawson turns it inside. He eludes a couple of tackles and gets a nice downfield block from his center, Franklin Stevens. First time really Dexter Dawson has been able to do anything with the football today. And he's a big play guy uh, for this Georgia Southern team. 
He's run the reverse this year already, and he's had about a 67-yard pickup against Chattanooga. But he is their leading receiver and, and leading punt returner in the Southern Conference. He's a big play performer. Yeah, he has 12 receptions coming into today's game, and 12 doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you throw it as seldom as Georgia <laughs> Southern does, that leads the team. But that's the first time he's had his hands on the football this afternoon as we count down under 340 to go in the ball game. Georgia Southern looking to drag. They pitch it back, Chris Wright, touchdown, Georgia Southern. A 10-yard touchdown run by Chris Wright. That's the execution you got to have on the option. Uh, Joe Dupree waits to the last second to flip it. Kramer makes the force on him. Williams gets the block on Andre Worrell, just enough to shield him out of the way. Chris Wright shows his running ability. Reed Haley. Perfect on the extra point. So a new score, 31-19. As Georgia Southern goes ahead by 12, we're going to go downstairs and check in with sideline man Mitch Glick and Mitch. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Uh, early on, everyone wondered who had it. Well, almost got it there. If Joe Dupree would respond with the knee brace, he has responded brilliantly. The worry was is he was going to be tentative. He had shown that when he went before he went down with that injury, and now Joe Dupree all week long. Tim Sowers has contended despite Bostick's success. Dupree was his starting man, and I think Joe Dupree has answered that question for the future, especially next week against Concord. All right, thanks, Mitch. Chris Wright, seven carries, 90 yards in this ball game with two touchdown runs. Chris Wright has been unstoppable on the option play. Yeah, they've overcome uh, the turnovers, the two fumbles, the interceptions, and they've overcome it with their running attack because it hasn't been a passing attack, but. Chris Wright and James Williams both having fine days for this offense, inside and outside. Now if we could break it down, he has to average over 10 yards a carry on this option play. Well, I think coming in into this game and looking at Chris Wright and his carries, he's averaging about seven and a half yards a carry. And uh, they've really picked it up, and he's had to pick up the, the, the balance with Shaft and Fraley's injury. Well, that's a big drive, not so much the numbers from it, but when it came, it was a time when Georgia Southern had to run a little time off the clock, and they've done just that. From deep in the end zone, they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Damon Bradley wisely takes a knee. And so Philly Jones and company have some work to do. They're 80 yards away, 329 left. There you see, that's a Jason Inslee, who got tagged a little bit earlier, and he appears to be okay. Probably got hit right in the chest, may have a bruised clavicle. But he appears to be all right. So three and a half minutes left. And Braniff Bonaventure comes into the ball game for Furman. He's the thrower. And he completes this one. This is McClarty. McClarty picks up 10, counted off at 11 as he steps out of bounds at the 31 yard line. That's what Furman needs. 10 to 15 yards a pop and get out of bounds and stop the clock. I'm a little surprised that uh, Furman has not used their passing attack more this year. As, as you look through their first eight games of the season, uh, they're averaging about 160 yards. They wanted to upgrade it. Last year was only about 120 yards a game, and, and Furman's been a fine passing football team through the 80s, but both these quarterbacks, Bonaventure and Jones, have done a good job today throwing the football. Bonaventure wants it over the middle again. It's McClarty, McClarty. Gets out of bounds again, another 12-yard pickup. So Braniff Bonaventure, nothing fancy for the freshman from Orlando, Florida. He just finds the open man underneath. Well, it's been there all day. Uh, Georgia Southern protecting for the deep pass, Don't want, does not want to give anything cheap and deep. And the underneath routes have been there, especially the second back coming out of the backfield. And McClarty's caught a bunch today. And another smart thing, you saw McClarty really looking to get out of bounds. He stopped the clock with 3.12 left. Bonaventure finds his man again out of bounds. This will be a short pickup, though. It was complete to Adric Harrison, who caught the touchdown pass a little bit earlier. Harrison, the sophomore from Thomasville, Georgia. 
pick of, a, of about four and a half. Call it five, well, second down and five coming up, but that's the small picture right now. Jimmy Satterfield and Be uh, Brandon Bonaventure looking at the big picture, and that's sticking it in the end zone and doing it quick because they only have 3.06 to work with, and they find themselves down by 12. Yeah, they don't signal those plays, and he comes over the sideline and he whispers in his ear. You saw the big block, the crowd reacted to it. Bonaventure just throws this one away and it's incomplete. Josh Cole, the nearest man to it. But that was a big time block in there somewhere. <laughs> that, was, that was Danny Britt. Uh, once again, Georgia Southern uh, shows prevent and then comes with uh, Danny Britt as a linebacker or defensive end, if you will, on the blitz. And somebody just lows him, and as he's leaping, they cut the legs out underneath him. I think what's more important, though, Danny Britt got up and chased Bonaventure out of bounds. So third down and five. Bonaventure, four of five. You see the numbers for 33 yards. He'll try it from the gun. Steps up in the pocket. And they may get a grounding call here. The crowd wanted it, and I think they've got a pretty good argument. But no flags come down, and a fourth down comes up. That's bull is what <laughs> yeah, Tim Stowers, Tim Stowers says. I, I want it. Give me that grounding. And the big thing with a grounding penalty is not the loss of yardage, it's the loss of down. So now a fourth down and five coming up for Furman. Play of the game for the Paladins. They set up the screen. It's complete to McClarty. McClarty has the first down inside the 45-yard line, down to the 42. And McClarty showed some inexperience there, but great talent. He didn't use one blocker but he had the talent <laughs> to pick up the first down on his own. Well, this time he knows where the sticks were. You remember in that uh, first half where he had a chance to fall for the first down? He, he lowers his head and goes for the, the sticks because you're right, he didn't get a lot of good blocking. Classic three-man screen out in front that had some block and he might have been able to take it down the sideline. So a first down with two and a half minutes to go. They set the chains and run the clock. Brannett throws it complete, but Damon Bradley was not able to get out of bounds, so they're going to have to work quickly here. This 31-19 score is not indicative at all of the way Furman has uh, played today, especially with their passing game. Offensively, I would think Furman has probably outgained Georgia Southern in total offense when we look at the numbers. This one thrown out of bounds. Damon Bradley, the nearest pilot into that football. Good coverage, though, as you see Alton Hitson walking back into the huddle. I was going to look at the two minute there, and I'm saying to myself, I'm used to the, I'm used to the other games. Uh, Furman coach is now kind of shouting out some instructions. That's uh, the offensive coordinator for Furman. I think it's Bruce Flowers. And Tim Stowers on the other sideline. His defensive coordinator, Tommy Spangler. So an even two minutes on the clock. It's a third down for Furman. Bonaventure wants to go into the end zone for Bradley, overshoots him, it's picked off by Alton Hitson. His first of the season, the 11th of the year for this Georgia Southern defense. Well, a little bit of inexperience here. Uh, he wants to throw, put some air on this ball and let Bradley make the, the catch, but uh, well covered by Alton Histon. He had, he certainly had the deep route covered and he, if he might have gone something short, more on a line, he had a better chance of a completion. Hits on the sophomore from Valdosta, Georgia. Makes a big play that could just about seal this one. With a minute 52 to play. Dupree on the option. He'll keep it out to the seven yard line. We'll see if Furman starts burning timeouts. I think you're going to see Dupree go down uh, uh, very quick a lot of times. Uh, we have a flag. Okay. I, I never saw a flag come in, but a clip is called against Georgia Southern. Another one of those downfield blocks by those wide receivers. Yeah, that's a very fine line is, is where you're hitting that guy. 
uh, today and a, a couple of times today. It, it's been, it could have gone either way and it went for Georgia Southern. Never Whippy. saw a flag come in. On the offense, half the distance to the goal. So they'll replay the first down half the distance to the goal. It was a silent flag, much like the silent official call. Let's go down and check in with Matt, Mitch Glicken. Guys, Stacy Moses just came in for Georgia Southern. They rarely run a tight end set. The penalty was on him. The Eagles are a little upset, and they want to just get this game over with. And put another W in the column, which is what it appears that they are going to do as we count down to 90 seconds to play in this ball game. Second down and five. Dupree wisely holds onto the football. He's taken down. But I tell you what, he's going to give... Uh, Jimmy Satterfield, more gray hairs if possible. When he's, uh, check it, make it to uh, Tim Stowers. He's going to give him gray hairs out there with the football in that one hand like that. He needs to cover it up and uh, take care of the ball that close to his own goal line. Barring a turnover here, this ball game's over. Yeah, they're just trying to keep this clock going, and uh, the timeouts here have come into play. A great story for that man right there. Tim Stowers comes in in his fourth season. He's 32 and 13 overall. When Georgia Southern started their football program back in 1981, they have come on and won 76% of their games since coming up in 1982. And on the other side, Jimmy Satterfield has won a lot of ball games with the purple and white. Took over for Dick Sheridan when he went to North Carolina State. And you see the Eagle faithful. They've seen enough this afternoon. They know that uh, the guys in blue and white have done it again. You know, a lot of this offensive uh, uh, game plan, though, is developed around uh, Tim Stower's background, offensive line coach here, offensive coordinator, and, and they had some great, great players during that period of time. Tracy Ham, Raymond Ghost, uh, guys who uh, really could move the football, and they're trying to get back to that offensively. There's a proud tradition, though, of defense and special teams here. It's homecoming here in Statesboro, and a lot of people coming back. 18,000 on hand this afternoon. They've seen their Eagles win their 66th game against only five defeats in this stadium. Dupree will hold on to this one. And he goes down. Now I tell you what, if I'm, if I'm Tim Stowers also, I may be saying, Joe, let's take a little hook slide. You've been injured. We're down to a point where uh, you get those defensive backs that get in a little bit of a nasty mood right now. And uh, you don't want anybody taking a cheap shot or even a good shot on anybody. Well, they're in a prime position to get into the playoffs and uh, also maybe to get a piece, a share of this uh, Southern Conference crown, a couple of their goals this year. And last year they were 7-2 and two and dropped their final two games. Uh, to Troy State or and uh, I can't Youngstown State I think was the other the other team and and uh, a little bit of a lull out of this football team talking to Tim Stowers he feels they're really ready to make that big final push Dupree well they throw a flag I think they may have run too much time off the clock something though that Georgia Southern has to think about right now is the fact that Nick Davis went out with a dislocated wrist they're really gonna have to check him on Monday exactly see when he will be able to come back and take a look at all the fine folks who bring it to you. It's been a pleasure working with everybody. Next week, we will be in Charleston, South Carolina. Ah, oh, that's right. The uh, military Citadel and VMI game. Kind of like the mini military game, I guess. That's Army, right. Navy. Uh, I wonder if the bands will be there. And oh, I'm sure. Because uh, that's homecoming for Citadel. It should be a good one. So 25 seconds left. Georgia Southern will snap it one more time. And Dupree will fall on it, and that should do it. Nope. Furman is going to call a timeout. You know, when people complain about why do you call timeout, it's impossible to win a ball game. You ask any coach that, they'll say one thing. If I give up, why should I, why should I never expect my players to give up? Sure. So, every, every play has to mean something in a football game, and... Uh, you don't want to waste them. And an eight offer up the bear and the bluegrass. Don't ever uh, leave a game with timeouts in your pocket. There, there are reasons to call them. Well, they counted down to 17 seconds remaining after this final timeout. 
One more snap should do it this time. It's a beautiful part of the country here in Statesboro, Georgia, and really a pretty campus. And just under 18,000 on hand here this afternoon for this one. Well, the leaves haven't changed down here nearly as much uh, as they were. I was with you, Kevin, what, two weeks ago in Boone, and, uh, and certainly they're changing up in the, the Atlanta area. Uh, but down here in uh, South Georgia, they haven't hit that quite yet. Also want to thank Elise Lane. She provided us with the statistics this afternoon. And Dupree will take a knee. Now, does Furman have one more to burn? No, they don't. That's going to do it. Do they shake hands? You see Satterfield making his way across to congratulate Tim Stowers. And Tim Stowers' bunch goes to 6-1 and one in conference play. Furman falls to 3-3. Three and three. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back to Georgia Southern in just a moment. Georgia Southern wins it 31 to 19. Good ball game. Oh, fine football game. Well played by both football teams. All right, that's going to wrap things up. So for Mitch Glickson and Jeff Van Noten, all of us at Sports South, I'm Kevin Eschenfelder saying so long from Statesboro, where Georgia Southern wins it 31 19.